Hell. It's an air jab. Just under red hatch there. It's blowing me behind this ball, would you believe it? Hey up troops. Say little to near again with another video. And this time we're looking at one that's been requested loads of times actually. It's Nomad. Nomad is an operator that you see taken at all levels of siege because she is really, really strong. Her primary role is flank watch. She can also cut the map in half essentially. She's also useful in quite a few post plan situations as well. There are right ways and wrong ways to play Nomad, so hopefully we'll go through those today and you can learn something from it. But just be the main thing to think about at the start of the video is where you place your air jabs. The air jabs actually have like a, an audio cue, which sounds like this. So if a defender's close to it, you've just got to be careful so that they are going to be able to hear it. You've just got to place it in a place where they can't find it and they can't spend too long looking for it. As always, I'm going to start out with the basics, so I'll put the timestamps in the line below. It says you already know the basics, move on to a couple of the tricks or a couple of the site setups, and hopefully you can still get something from the video. I normally say this at the end, however, I'm going to say it at the beginning again. If you like the channel, if you like the video, if you like any of the videos I've done, do me a favour, subscribe to the channel. It costs you absolutely nothing, and it makes me day. So cheers. So Nomad's an operator that there is a bit of an art to use, you know, where it, you know, it takes a bit of thinking where you're going to put your air jabs. You know, don't just start putting your air jabs everywhere. You only get three of them. You want to make sure you get your team and yourself get the best use out of it and you can protect yourself. Not only can you protect yourself as Nomad, but you can protect your support players when they might get ran out on uncertain breaches. Just thinking about Garage on Clubhouse, for example, or the top four on Canal. There's a few different places where you can really help your team by just using your brain a little bit and thinking about where you put your air jabs down. As always, that's enough of me waffling on. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so with Nomad then, let's start off as we always do with the loadout. Now, normally in the loadout screen, I'll say there isn't much of a conversation to be had. You should take this, this, and this. However, with Nomad, it's a completely open field. I can see an argument for taking every single one of these weapons over another one. I personally use the AK-74M, the normal pistol, not the Han Solo pistol, and a flashbang. However, if somebody said to me, I use the ARX, um, the hand solo pistol and a breaching charge, I couldn't see it. Like, I could see no reason to argue with that. The ARX is unbelievably good and the recoil is unbelievably low. The main thing that I have an issue with is there's only 21 rounds in a mag or 20 rounds in a mag plus the one in the chamber. And I think it can be a bit low sometimes. I personally, I like the AK. If you look at the stats, it's really not that much different. There's slightly more damage and slightly higher fire rate with the uh, with the ARX, but as you can see down here, 47 fire, uh, damage, 700 fire rate, but only 20 capacity. Whereas I can see here, 44 damage, 650 fire rate, but 40 capacity. There is more recoil on the AK, but I don't know. I just feel like the AK really packs a punch and is actually underused. But I get why people use the ARX. I use the ARX on Iona, so I know it's I know it's a good gun. You can have the 2x on there as well, which is dead clean. But me personally, I go with the AK the standard pistol and the flashbangs personally but again this as we always say in the loadout phase this is completely personal preference okay so starting with the basics which is nomad's role nomad's role was primarily flank watch um as flank watch i've used these stairs here just as an example on villa because astro stairs are something that you always get people trying to flank up here later in the round as a as an attacker if you were playing nomad you could put an air jab at the bottom of these stairs and when the defender is coming around to flank up the stairs, as they get to this area here, they're going to get blown away by the air jab. If you're holding the angle, you'll see them get blown back and you'll get a really, really loud um, sound, which sounds like this. Then you know that the air jab's been activated and you know there's a defender at the bottom of the stairs. That's the flank watch side of things. The other thing Nomad can be used for is for a post-plant situation. So as you're building and execute ready to get the plant down, let's just say, for example, the, the bomb site was statue here and you were going to try and plant behind the bomb here. You could Nomad off there, and you could Nomad off there, and you could Nomad off somewhere else with the third one, which would sort of protect the bomb site to protect the, the plant once it's down. That's another thing she can do. It's primarily flank watch that her job is, is, is mainly, though. So now we know how to prevent the flank upstairs. The only really useful uh, use of Nomad's air jabs is preventing runouts. So the classic here is on garage. How many times do you see uh, some numpty defender run out of garage and try and get a pick onto the breach? Pop an air jab above the door, and that's that taken care of. Just bear in mind, and we'll talk about this later in the video, always put the air jab above the door by quite some way, just so you don't put it at the bottom of the door, because then they can be muted. If they're at the top of the door, they can't be muted. Sticking with the theme of stopping runouts, jump outs, whatever you wish to call them, this is another common one. You've got somebody playing on CC window or con window, but mainly CC window here. 
You can get a defender jumping out of either bedroom or gym, mainly gym. But if you look at um, Nomad in off the gym window, one thing to note here for Nomad is there's no bullet drop or it doesn't get affected by gravity or whatever you wish to call it. Where I'm about to fire this air jab is where it will go. It doesn't dip or anything as you fire it. So as you can see, it's over there now. And there's the ping of it. So that gym window covered off as well if you want to. Obviously, this works with every window, whether you're on Master Balk or Study Balk on Villa or whatever it might be. It works on every window. One thing to note with the air jabs, if you place the air jab, say, bottom right of the window where that bullet mark is, in fact, I've got a spare one. I can put it down there like that. When the defender jumps out, it's going to blow them the opposite direction of where that air jab is. So if you put it bottom right, it's going to blow the defender this direction. If you put the air jab bottom left, it's going to blow the defender this direction. So maybe think about that when you're trying to, like, sort of, say, for example, the gym window. You, they're not going to go very far right. They're going to bump into this aircon unit. Maybe you want to bring them left instead. There's a couple of windows on various maps where you sort of, you can manipulate where the defender goes to give them more chance of being outside for longer once they've been caught by the air jab. So getting on how to place an air jab down and where to place it, there is a science to it. So don't just think about placing an air jab. I'll, I'll go through where not to place them after where I've been through, like where the good places are to place them. But for me, on these stairs here, the best place to place them is right there. Reason for that is as the defender's coming around this corner here to flank, you can get the early indication that someone's at the bottom of the stairs before they can affect anything. I have seen people place the air jab at the top of the stairs here. The problem with placing it there is the defender can get to here without the air jab going off. If someone's rotating back through from master through bathroom here, you can just hold the angle and you can actually have an effect in the round. If the air jab goes at the bottom here, the, the defender doesn't even get up the stairs before the air jab goes off. So when it comes to placing the air jab on the stairs, it's kind of personal preference uh, in terms of where on the stairs you want to put it. Obviously, the lower down the better, but you also don't just want to have it wide out in the open. Somewhere there would be fine. I like to put it down at the bottom. You could put it there, but again, the defender's going to be halfway up the stairs before that goes off. It's personal preference. You'll play around with different sides and different staircases and different flanks that you want to watch. Eventually, you'll know when you've played enough Nomad that when you're attacking certain sites, you know where you're going to put the air jabs. For me, the air jab always goes on the stair right there. The reason I put it just slightly further off the corner is what you don't want to do is place it here. So when a defender's coming round, you can see the air jab here before they've had to even worry about getting hit by it. By the time you get to sort of here, you can see the other one behind there. By the time you get to about there, that one's going to go off anyway. If you place it there, obviously you can see that it's it's, it's there before you get anywhere near it. So that is a, is, a, is a bad placement. Place it slightly further around the corner, so it's going to go off when the defender gets to here. Now, another thing is, and I have seen this, and just don't do it, <laughs> is people are placing air jabs like this. Right, okay, that's the stairs covered. And obviously that's not a good placement of an air jab at all. As the defender's coming up the stairs here, they go, oh, look, there's an air jab. Don't need to worry about that. Uh, and they can shoot it out before they get anywhere near it. So just think about where you're putting it before you place the air jab down. As I say, there for me is the best position on these stairs. But I, if someone said to me they prefer putting it here or even here, I could see an argument for that. Um, the other thing to think about, again, is if you're putting it up here, th this side is always going to be better than this side. Because as the defender's coming up, they could see it there and try and do something about it. If it's in this corner here, they're not going to see it until they get to here. And by that point, the air jab's already gone off. So just one thing in terms of mentality with Nomad, and I see this in some ELO brackets, is you'll have a, a Nomad player place an air jab on the bottom of the stairs, and they'll wait on the stairs like this, waiting for the kill. An air jab is not designed, in my opinion, to try and give you a free kill by knocking the defender back so you can kill them. The air jab is there to let you know that a player is flanking, and then you can act on the information after that. Let's just say, for example, the defender's coming up the stairs here, and they come up, they get air jab, they get knocked back. I can guarantee that 99% of the time, that defender is never going to come up Astro stairs for at least another sort of 30 seconds or so. I guarantee you what they'll probably do is either go down into basements or more than likely is they'll go round to top red or they'll go round to main through um, through there instead. So just try and think game sense wise. If you'd just been air jabbed, where would you go? If you got to here and you'd been air jabbed, there's absolutely no way you stand up and go, oh, I'll just have a quick look up here anyway. I mean, some people might, but the I mean, <laughs> you have to be a, a certain mindset to do that. But 99% of the time, once they've been air jabbed, they're not going to come up those stairs. They'll move to somewhere else. So work with your team to think, where's the next place they're going to go? Are they going to go down or are they going to go to another staircase? Where's it going to be? Try not to have a, a player wasted just waiting for that kill on the air jab. Another thing of note whilst we're talking about these stairs as well is an air jab for me doesn't replace a drone. A drone will always give you the best information if somebody's on the drone because it's live information. That air jab's only going to go off once. For me, I always put a flank cam up in this corner here. 
I would always still keep a flank cam looking at the bottom of Astro anyway. That is a great drone spot, by the way, if you've never used it. I always keep a, um, a drone looking at, um, at Astro anyway, because once that once that air jab goes off, or if it gets destroyed, you're still at least going to be given the information from uh, from Astro. You don't want the air jab to go off, and then you've got no more information about what's going on in Astro stairs. So it's just a really good indication about where players are, but I would still keep a drone on that side and, and on that flank anyway. So just to give you an example of what it looks like when an air jab goes off, if we place an air jab on the bottom of the stairs here to try and get a, a bit of a flank information of somebody coming up, you go see Cade here. Cade's going to make his way up the stairs. And as he comes around the corner here, you get that sound. Cade gets knocked back. We hear it's gone off. We know Cade's at the bottom of the stairs, and we can act on that. One of the cool things you can do with Nomad's air jab, by the way, if there's a soft wall in the area of where the air jab goes off and you blow the defender in the right direction, they're going to go through the soft wall. So if you see Katie, he's about to take a trip down to... Uh, <laughs> he's about to take a trip below. So if, if they do get air jabbed and there's a soft wall there, they'll go through there as well. Now, it's going to have to be a pretty rare occurrence, but let's just say, for example, an air jab goes off while there's a friendly in the area of the air jab as well. It's not going to happen very often, but I'll show you. We'll take the same trip Cade just took. Hold on. <laughs> so the same thing happens there as well. So air, if there's a friendly in the area of effect of the air jab when it gets triggered, the, the friendly will get, uh, will get affected as well. Nomad can also be used as a bit of an anti-clash operator as well. Now what you don't want to be doing to, to get past the clash and to kill a clash, I've seen, I've seen people that fire air jabs at Clash's feet. The problem is, by the time if you look over here, by the time that air jab takes effect, the clash will be out of the area of effect of the uh, of the air jab. So what you want to do is you want to put it behind the clash, ideally on the door she wants to retreat to. If you put it on the door she wants to retreat to, you essentially pin the clash in the area, and then you can sort of manipulate to, to try and get around it by doing that. So if you pop the air jab up on the top of there, you know, when you get aggressive, the clash is going to have to retreat back to where she wants to go. She's going to get air jab. And you can get rid of the, uh, the clash that way. She Nomad is actually really strong at being a sort of anti-clash operator. I know what you're thinking here. This is a Nomad video and I'm now playing mute. But I just wanted to show you a counter to Nomad that you just need to be aware of. So we can hear there's an air jab on the door here. Mute can now place a mute jammer down. Which will cancel off the uh, the air jab. will disable it. And anyone then that's on CEO repel you want to run out on. They think they're safe because the air jab's there. And you can run out on them from there. Now, just bear in mind that if that air jab was on the top of the door there, I'll try and show you quickly with the area of effect from Mute. It doesn't cover the top of the door. You can see that it only goes up to there. So if that air jab's in this area here, the Mute Jammer won't cover it. So when you're placing your air jab on this door, put it higher than the door frame itself. Don't put it at the bottom of the door. Put it higher up and then the Mute Jammer won't affect it. This is going to sound ridiculously obvious, but I've died to this a few times, which I'm a bit embarrassed to admit, but I have. Uh, I won't lie to you. I, I, especially once you've used all three air jabs, you can still equip the air jab launcher. And you can see that it's equipped by the way that Nomad holds a gun and that little sort of thing that flicks out from the side of the air jab launcher. Once you've fired all three air jabs, that yellow line won't appear anymore, so just be careful of that. The amount of times, and I have done it before, you go into a building and you're trying to take a gunfight like this, and then you, you know, you line up the sweetest little headshot you've ever seen in your life and you end up firing an air jab at the enemy. Just make sure that that little flap on the air jab launcher is tucked in when you want to take a gunfire. So just going to go through a couple of my favorite executes with Nomad. We're attacking Villa Aviator Bar now and I'm just going to assume that we've got uh, main stairs control. When you've got main stairs, get your air jab above main stairs there to cover that. Cover that, I can't talk. Then... When you come through to study, we've got study control by now, and uh, you see a lot of people placing the Nomad above the door here. Ah, uh, it's placed it on the arch. It's just slightly different, and um, people don't tend to look for it when they're uh, approaching from the arch there. The area of effect comes all the way around here, so you'll be absolutely fine with that. The third one then, which is an interesting one, and you have to be sort of a bit more precise with, you'll be usually be being held from Vault, so just make sure you don't get your head taken off when you swing around and peek this. You'll have a rotate here. You'll have a rotate there 99% of the time. What you want to do is get your air jab up in this area here. So as you can see, the area of effect covers anyone coming through the vault door and anyone coming through the rotate. The idea being you get it high enough so when someone's coming through the rotate, they might hear the air jab, but as they're coming through here and ADS, you know, about worried, worried about where you're planting, where they're being held from, they're not going to see that air jab. That means anyone that comes out of vault door gets affected by the air jab and anyone coming through the rotate gets affected by the air jab as well. Obviously that light, um, lines you up to plant either behind the vault door or behind the maps table, but only once you pass the line of sight of the vault. Never plant here, obviously. 
Wait until you pass the liner side of the vault, basically the middle of the map stable. And you should be safe to plant as long as you're not getting peaked from bar. So this one's for attacking top floor on Conchless, and honestly, it has such a good conversion rate. Don't open the barricade on yellow stairs. Let the, if the defender wants to run out, he's going to have to do that himself. Do you remember what I said earlier on in the video, where don't put your Nomad Charge or Nomad Air Jab at the bottom of the door, because it could be muted, potentially? Get it higher above the door, where the area effect is still going to affect the door, obviously. That's your first one. From there, you open up the CEO windows, both of them. Like this. Get on Repel. You know you're safe from uh, from Yellow Door. You might get run out of piano, but not very often at all. From here, don't just fire the second air jab. Get an a uh, get a flashbang through the window to see if there's any ADSs. If there is an ADS, get another flashbang through there to make sure you burn two if there's two there. Then what you want to be doing is obviously don't get peaked while you're doing this. There's going to be a rotate here 99% of the time, or a rotate here. Whichever side the rotate is, is what you need to air jab off. The middle one is 99% of the time will be reinforced. So your next air jab goes above the double door there. And then your next air jab goes above whichever rotate, whichever side of the wall the rotate is. Normally it's this side. So just pop that air jab there. That means now nobody can get back into CEO once you've cleared it out. You're going to have somebody playing in this area here. I'll just show you with the drone. Somebody plays here quite a lot. In this gap here. Or plays above the hatch. Uh, if they play here, they'll normally reinforce this wall so you can't get them from the skylight. However, if you go over to connect a window, you can get an angle on them. I'll show you from the uh, the drone on the desk here. You can see connector window there. Anyone playing here can be uh, deleted from uh, connector window. Once that's the case, once that's once that's sorted, and you've still got a couple of flashes left, Nomad's going to have the uh, the case or the uh, the diffuser if you want to call it that. Flash into double door if anyone playing the gas. And ideally, now you plant behind the. Uh, behind the chair. I can't plan because this isn't the bomb site in this custom game. I was wondering why the uh, diffuser wasn't going down then. But from here, you're pretty much safe. Obviously, you're going to be able to get peeked from places, but they're not going to be able to get through the double door or through their own rotate. After you've got the plant down, be careful of the C4 below, but after you've got the plant down, just, you know, play play your normal game and uh, and try and get the kills as you can. If you can, even better, get back out the window and get back on repel. But once you've got those two areas um, air jabbed off, so the rotate and the double door, I, th I think it's just such an easy take once you've got that sorted and once you've cleared CEO. So the next attack setup or attack execute, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'll show you is on Canal. So you're going to get somebody running out of this door 99 times out of 100 to uh, swing anyone on the breach. Pop an air jab over that door there. The next place you want to cover is uh, what's called Suicide or some people call it Mudroom. I think it's called something like Second Floor Entrance or something in the game if you look on the compass. Second Floor Roof Entrance. Or one above there as well. Now, with your third one, it's up to you what you do with it. I do one of two things normally. This is the breach that's open, by the way. I hope you like it. Uh, I either put it above the double door here to try and uh, protect in a post-plant situation, or if it, if we've planted default, which is behind this sort of desk here, I'll place it on the floor there. So as and when, or let's say as and when, if the, uh, the rest of the team die, at least once the plant's down, there's an air jab there which might delay the defender from getting to the defuse in time. The third one, again, you can sort of do as you want. But the air jab that's here and the one that's on the door over there is mainly just to protect the guys who are playing support and, and playing the breach here. They're holding angles, they're holding this, they're holding that, they're holding the other. Um, and it's just to protect them so they don't get run out from here and they don't get run out from here. Um, the third one, as I say, you can use it yourself selfishly. You can go and help another member of your team or you can do whatever you want with it, really. Sure, air jab. So there we go, it sums Nomad up. Nomad's an operator that I actually really want to learn how to play more, even though I know how to play it to an extent. There's a load more side setups and stuff that I don't know personally, admittedly, and I really want to learn more. If there's a, a side setup that you know that I haven't shown you just now, get it in the comments below. Hopefully I can learn something from you today as well. Now, if there's any other operator you want to see next, bang it in the comments below. I always do the ones that people request. Mirror, 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 I can't talk. Mirror was a request. Ace was a request. Nomad was a requester. Get it below if you want to see a certain operator. I said it before, I'll say it again. Do me a favor. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. It really helps me out. It costs you absolutely nothing as well, as I always say. Cheers. Also, don't forget, I stream on Twitch four days a week. You can catch me there on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 p.m. UK time, normally until about midnight, usually later on a Friday when we have a few brewskis as well. Other than that, come and check us out on Twitch, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.